these educational activities, uh, do you think they're uh, they're successful, or these people are doing uh, a great job? Oh, from my from my experience and my observation of uh, the educational experiences that uh, that Gulen is is backing and and pushing, uh, and I suppose with the help of of uh, other sponsors in that, uh, I would I would have to say that they must be very successful. Uh, another thing that really impressed me uh, in connection with education and also in connection with the sponsors, if we can kind of bring these two two things together, I found out uh, after dinner one evening at one of the families, one of the host's families, that the the businessman who had us to his home to meet his family and, and so forth, uh, and we had shared a wonderful evening with, with him and, and the entire family, uh, that he and his brother sponsor uh, a number of, of students, uh, and here again they're putting up uh, a lot of money uh, <clears throat> to sponsor. I believe he said, uh, I don't want to, to misquote him, but I believe he said he and his brother were sponsoring 500 students to go to uh, one of these private schools, and I'm assuming that this is one of Gulen's uh, schools that he has uh, initiated. We didn't make that entirely clear, but uh, that was my impression, that it was one, through one of these educational facilities that uh, he and his brother were uh, here again sponsoring that many students each year to, to make sure that they were getting the kind of education they thought was so important. What do you think is the driving? Like, what is, what is the source? What is the reason? <laughs> I think there can only be one reason that uh, <coughs> Gulen and and people who look for him to leadership, look to him for leadership, uh, have to be sold on the importance of of education. Uh, you know, this this same kind of commitment in this country could uh, make a big difference in. Uh, uh, in the way students here uh, feel about the outside world. I don't know of any anybody, they may be here and I just don't know them, but I don't know of any any businessmen that are putting up that kind of money that would sponsor four or five hundred students to get an education, and that's just in one community uh, <clears throat> that we, we happen to, to meet. This was just one businessman and his brother, so two businessmen, uh, that are sponsoring that many students. And to, to be willing to put up that kind of money, you've got to have a real deep down commitment to, to, uh, to the education, uh, to education and to the, the means that you're pushing it for in order to, to spend that kind of your personal fortune. Uh, in, in in promoting what you believe in. Okay. Uh, that concept, the last question about the educational activities. Uh, these educational institutions or, or, or these efforts, do you think they can be a hope for the world's future in general and, and, and the peace to be established? Let me understand, let me be sure I understand the question. <coughs> uh, do I think that these educational facilities are important? Well, you know, this educational understand or movement or efforts throughout the world, like you said, they, they're not open schools only in Turkey, so mm -hmm. they're in many countries now. So right. Do you think that would be a hope for future? Oh, absolutely. I, th I think that uh, education is is very much a part of uh, bringing the world together and uh, uh, you know not only religion but I think education is a very important component part of uh, bringing the the world together and, and to promoting peace and an understanding because I think so often it's it's ignorance 
and lack of understanding, lack of ability to, on, on the part of people uh, to, to think through uh, ideas and to, to think about things that are really going to, to promote uh, peace between uh, peoples, whether the peace in families, people, or peace between communities, peace between the larger community, countries uh, of, of, uh, of all over the world. And it's only through education that we're going to, to be able to bring about more understanding and, and peace uh, throughout the world. So the, uh, the second, the, the third part actually, the, dial, the interfaith dialogue, uh, with a connection that uh, you you mentioned about kind of uh, the understanding the other, uh, the mutual respect and, and sort of connecting the other people and sharing with them. Uh, what would you think the prejudices or the things that prevent people to believe in interfaith or intercultural dialogue? Like what? What makes them think that don't believe in that? I think one of the the biggest problems we've got is lack of understanding. Uh, I, I heard one member of the the leaders of uh, interfaith dialogue say that for for a person to really understand someone else's religion, they need to understand their own and to be firmly grounded in in their own religion before they can be open and understand another person's religion. And it's fear, it, it's not only, uh, for lack of a better term, ignorance, but I think ignorance and fear go together on this. And uh, someone who is, who lacks the understanding of, of their own religion and the lack of, of openness to other ideas and not to, to be open to them and not let it shake their own ideas uh, is, is one of the important things here. And uh, not to be fearful of something they don't understand, but the way to overcome that fear is to find out more about it. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm very curious uh, about other people's ideas and you know, I, I feel like that our Creator put all of us here on the world, on the earth. Uh, <clears throat> I don't understand and probably never will understand uh, why our Creator, God, uh, gave us so many different ideas about how to worship the Almighty, the Creator, the uh, God, as we commonly refer uh, to the Creator. Um, and I'm not sure that any of us will ever have the capacity to understand the mind of God, because after all, that's why God is God. That's why the Creator is the Creator, was the Creator, is the Creator, and will be, and, and why we, we feel that we have to keep searching and striving and, and knowing more about the creation process and the creator. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's curious that we have these different ideas. So a part of the way we, we try to understand the mind of God is to find out about all of the other ideas and concepts uh, that God must have planted in other minds all over the world. And that's the only way we're going to come together, not by fighting each other and saying, no, no, I've got the only answer. Your answer is wrong, or your approach is wrong. Mine is the only right one. The, the way to, to get closer to the mind of God, I think, is to explore all of these ideas and, uh, and try to come up with, uh, with what's satisfactory for us and what works for for us and what ultimately will work for all of humankind. <clears throat>